Sploot. <laughs> that is spooting, and it's serious business, but not necessarily something that you need to be worried about. If you see a squirrel or some other animal spooting, uh, wildlife centers in San Francisco have been getting calls from people saying that they've seen squirrels. And look, why don't we jump to this photo? Spooting all over the place. It, they're not like they're not trying to listen for trains approaching. Um, they're not, they, it's not that they just can't even. It's apparently a thing that has to do with keeping cool. But apparently they, they feel like they need to get out in front of this. Not just in San Francisco. The New York City Parks Twitter account uh, put out a photo of a squirrel spooting as well. Um, in the park, you can see him getting some of that nice cool ground. Anyway, it's a reaction to extreme heat. And so if you've got a fur coat and you're stuck in 107 degree weather, you don't have a lot of options to cool down. Uh, if you're a bear, you can get in a pool, as we talked about earlier this week. Uh, for squirrels and other mammals, sp splooting is one of the things that they can do. They stretch themselves out on the ground, remain completely motionless. Apparently, they get as much of their surface area on the ground as possible because it's cooler. It's also called heat dumping, but that's gross, so we're not going to call it that anymore. They're not the only ones that do it. You, in fact, might have a dog that's done it. I think this is a corgi, perhaps. You can see uh, splooting as well, uh, if we jump to that photo. Nice, cool ground. Um, here's a marmot who is splooting so thoroughly that it doesn't even look like a creature anymore. It just looks like, like a fur coat that someone threw over a wooden bench or something. But anyway, it's not something that you need to freak out about specifically for the animal. The animal's probably gonna be okay. What you should freak out about is the fact that splooting is going to become more common because extreme heat is becoming more common as well, Jessica. That's the thing that I'm worried about, that it's gonna get to 107 and then 109 and 111, and eventually you can't sploot hard enough to deal with the heating earth. Yeah, it can be difficult to imagine what the world will be like uh, in 10 years, but imagine a bunch of animals just laid out dying of extreme heat. And if the animals are hot, unhoused people are hot as well. Homeless people die of heat exhaustion in this extreme heat. It's a really bad situation already. In Los Angeles, there have been extreme temperatures. I wasn't here for it. I was in New York. But, John, I'm sure you can attest to how hot it's been over the past few days. Yep. Like, if the animals are not doing well, neither are the people who don't have housing. And we're letting them die in the streets. And it's the same problem in the extreme cold in the winter where people are freezing to death. And governments were sitting. State governments had federal funds that they were just sitting on, hundreds of millions of dollars, while people are freezing in the streets. And it's very sad to see the animals. But it's affecting people, too. Yeah. Yeah, 100 percent. And then you see news like, you know, them, them cutting down trees and things like that. Uh, yeah, this is going to get worse. We need policies that take this into account, not just policies to stop further heating or the rate of further heating, but to deal with the issues that come from heating. And that's issues across things like infrastructure, but also humanity and animals. We need to be on the lookout um, for these things. Anyway, it can be a little bit cute, I guess, on social media, but it does have some serious implications, so bear it in mind.